Hello and welcome back to NV Fine Art Studio. I'm Nina and today we are in Bendigo. This is one of the oldest towns in Victoria and we will be talking about the importance and process of tonal and color sketching and preliminary small paintings. Bendigo is located approximately 150 kilometers north from Melbourne in Australia. It was just a ship station before 1850 and as soon as the gold was discovered it started to rapidly grow and became one of the richest towns in that time. Hence the beautiful architecture around us and my decision to come here and do a tonal value study and a little color sketch and talk you through the process. Many non-professional artists don't actually do any preliminary work, maybe due to lack of time, but sometimes due to the fact that they always want to paint a proper painting and get bored of exercises. But this is the biggest mistake for two reasons. Working on a bigger painting straight away may stop you from experimenting. You may think, this is the final work, I cannot really mack around with this and I cannot make any mistakes here. Also, there is no development and personal growth comes from painting a scene just once. It's like a trying to solve a Rubik's Cube if you've never done it before. You can get away with solving one side, but not all six. Another common barrier for practicing is the fact that you actually get a physical object, a painting, after you're done. I might think I already have a painting, why would I have another one? But in reality it should be similar to practicing playing a musical instrument. Can you imagine playing a melody on the piano just once and expecting it to be perfect? When you play there is nothing that actually holds you. You skip the note, you just start again and play it better. But just because there is a physical evidence of work done, aka painting, it doesn't mean there are no skipped notes and this shouldn't be replayed or it should be any harder to start again and paint it again. Repetition gives knowledge, understanding, analysis and proficiency. Repetition also gives you confidence and will to experiment. If you start to change lighting, change shapes, change composition, change colors, eventually you work out what works the best for you, what you like and develop your own style and proficiency. It gets easier with time. After a certain number of practices, you will work out things just by looking at the subject. One of my subscribers asked me how do you know what to change, what to remove and what to add in your subject to get a good painting out of it. The answer is you will never be able to do it unless you do lots of quick small sketches. Change things around, experiment and understand what works and what doesn't. So practice, practice and practice. When I say you need to do little sketches, I don't mean you just come to a place and start painting whatever you see. There are certain things that you need to keep in mind. First of all, best to start with value study. And remember, it doesn't have to be just one value study. At this point, you are working out the composition and need to experiment with it. Failure in composition fails the painting. I'll talk about value study more when we do it. Another thing, as soon as you are happy with the value study, you can proceed to a color version. When you do so, you must stick to your value study, otherwise it will be pointless. If you struggle with understanding tone of val values versus color, I will be doing a tutorial about that, so stick around, subscribe and hit that bell button to be notified of new videos become available. Next, keep it simple and only focus on shapes. If big shapes don't work, any amount of details will not solve it. Don't forget this is a sketch. Basically, it's like getting dressed to be home all day. You need something clean and comfortable that works. Remember, at this point you need to work out the mother color and make it dominant. This will determine your feel of the place. The other colors need to complement the mother color. These are the things to keep in mind. So let's get into it. Today I'm using a limited palette. I would highly recommend doing the same for your sketches to keep it simple. All you need for the work we will be doing today is a black color that can go from 0 to 10 in value and one or two choices of blue, red and yellow. For the black I will be using sepia, a warm version of neutral tint. 
For my blues, I have ultramarine, lavender and cobalt turquoise. A warm, a neutral and a cool blues respectively. For yellows, I have yellow ochre and burnt sienna. And here I have a different reason for having two. Yellow ochre can only go up to value 5 and burnt sienna is good till 8 or 9. I could have used just burnt sienna, but it's too warm when diluted to value 2. As for my reds, alizarin crimson and cadmium red light. Again, one cool and one warm. In regards to the brushes for the sketches, you only need a medium or small mop and one round medium fully synthetic with a good point brush. I took the needle brush today also, mostly for wires and tree branches, but don't forget it's a sketch. Your wires and tree branches do not need to be perfect, so even using this pearl or brush won't suffice. So let's get started. Any painting starts with a pencil drawing. This is the slowest part, probably the most boring, but most important. This is the part when you do observation of the subject. Pencil drawing is the backbone of the painting. At this point you need to work out the perspective, proportions and basic composition you want to stick to. Sounds simple, but this is the most common mistake that I see on a regular basis. The crooked horizontals and verticals, the perspective lines that don't meet at the point of perspective, proportions of objects to each other being wrong and things like that. The only way you can become proficient at it is by doing lots of pencil sketches. In my sketch here, the things that I'm focusing on are the uh, position of the roof, how much the towers I want to include in the painting. I decided that the main tower is too tall to include it in its entirety. There will be too much sky in the painting otherwise. But without the little towers, we will lose too much of the Gothic vibe. This is another point to think about. What makes this scene? What are the objects that make it unique? I also decided to move the horizon line higher than it is in reality, because it will emphasize the sense of aerial viewpoint. I also feel it's important to make the diagonal of the road very prominent. This will further strengthen the idea that the cathedral is on top of the hill. I decided to include the trees on both sides as in real life. This will make it an H composition and create a tunnel that leads your eye to the focal area. I am adding a few cars and people for this sense of scale and action in this scene. They always bring life to the subject. The sketch is finished, I'm happy with it and ready to proceed to the value study. The idea of value study is that you divide the scene on light, middle and dark tonal values to find big shapes. To do so, you need to squint your eyes to eliminate all the little details. Anything that is light, you leave as white of the paper. You do not actually paint the light value on the value study, you leave it as negative space, in other words, paint around it. The rest you paint as one big middle value shape. When it's done, you add the darkest details to bring the light and depth to your painting. That's the theory. Let's see how we do it in practice. I will use this small brush. It is Neve Alvaro Castanier number no. 05. I'm starting with preparing the mixture. It needs to be close to tonal value 6, middle gray, and it needs to be in milk consistency. In other words, 50 to 50 paint to water ratio. I have the palette on a slope, it's approximately 15 degrees angle, and you can see the consistency. It is a fluid, but it doesn't run too easily down. This is a milk consistency. 
While I'm doing this, I'm looking at the subject and determining where the lightest areas are in our subject and do I want to stick to what I see in real life. The sky, the roofs, the building, the road all look light. The tricky part in this scene is that it's not in full sunlight and it's not against it. The sun shines from the left and the building is in semi-shade. That puts it on the barrier between the light and middle tonal values. So, it is totally up to me what I want to do in this situation. This is the perfect way to try out different things. Experiment, practice and work out for yourself what works and what doesn't in your mind's eye. In my first value study, I'm sticking to what I see. This is probably the best way to start. If it works, there is no need to invent a wheel. If it doesn't, we will start to change things around. When you do your value study, the following steps are very important. First, prepare a big puddle on your palette that is enough to paint the entire middle value shape. Make sure that when you paint the middle value, it is consistent in tone throughout. This will require frequent reloading and starting with previous bead. Remember, if you cannot keep a consistent value in one color, there is no way you can keep it consistent in multiple. It's okay if it varies half a tone or you do it on purpose to test soft edges as I did for the distant hills and shadows. But if it is an accident, this is definitely something that you need to practice, that you need to work on. If you struggle with keeping your washes clean and seamless, I have a tutorial on this topic. The link will be in the top right corner and in the description below. Next point is to make sure all the middle values connect and form a one big shape. In other words, there are no little objects floating on their own in the painting. Things like little birds, leaves or rocks are fine, but nothing major. For example, if I add cars, they are connected to trees with shadows on the road. Windows are connected to the shadows under eaves. The tree, for example, on the left is connected to the shadow under it in the foreground and to the tree on the left and so on. There is no even a single sharp edge between the middle value shapes. This is the ultimate goal. As soon as the middle value shape is done, you can either start painting the darks wet on wet if you want soft edges, or dry it. If you want to paint your darks wet on dry and have sharp or dry brush marks. To paint the darks, I use Escoda Perla number 12. It has a really nice point and it's really good for smaller shapes. As you can see, to create a dark tone, I hardly use any water. There is already a bit of water on my brush and I paint straight from the well. This is why it's okay to use synthetic here. We do not use much water anyway. The most important part here is to not overdo your darks. This may make your painting look overworked and too flat, too illustrational, similar to ink and watercolor type of paintings. There is nothing wrong with this style, don't get me wrong, but it is not necessarily what we are after here. This is it, this is my finished value study. I'm not entirely happy with it, I don't think it solves the puzzle of what should appear darker, roof or walls. The roof is lighter at the moment, I anticipated that the shadows from the flying buttresses would make the walls appear darker, but they don't. And I cannot add more them, as it will get too repetitive. I believe we will need to paint a few more versions here. But let's do the color sketch first to work out the hues and temperatures. This is a really good exercise on its own. And then think of what kind of changes we can make in values. There are two big differences when you repaint value study in color. The first one is that you start with the first wash. The first wash is done in lightest tonal values and is there to help you firstly get rid of the white of the paper and secondly to set the mother color for the painting. 
So when you do your first wash, you really need to make choices about what hues, temperatures you are using. There is a lot of warmth bouncing around, so I decided to stick to warm underpaint as is in real life for the majority of the sketch. If this doesn't work out, you can definitely try cooler sky, cooler yellow for the cathedral and so on. This is definitely something that is much more efficient to experiment on a little sketch. I also like to vary the tonal values a little between 1 and 5 in my first wash. This helps me with visualizing uh, the depth from the get-go. Another thing that I experiment at this stage is the edges. For example, I added the tree in warm green in value 5 or 6, uh, wet on wet at this stage as an investment into the future second wash. This creates a nice soft connection between the first wash and the second, between the lighter values and the middle tonal values. When the first wash is done and you are ready to do the second one, make sure the tonal value study is right in front of you. You need to follow it, otherwise this work was done all for nothing. Another important point is to stick to the values you used on the value study. The only thing that you vary is the color and temperature. The middle value wash, as we all know it, is the hardest. This is where the real painting begins. This is where you apply all your skills. Practicing on a sketch has a huge impact on the success on a larger scale painting. You apply the same skills of mixing the right tones and consistencies, but you are not as pressured with time and scale. You do not need massive puddles with different colors to keep the bead going. Another good thing about doing a smaller sketch is it teaches you to approximate shapes. You cannot possibly fit all the information that is in front of you into this little piece of paper. But you need to work out how to make a mark that suggests the shape. This is the finished color version of this value study. As I mentioned before, I wanted to explore more options of the tonal value combinations and their impact on the message set. So here are a few more sketches I did on location, with darker roofs and darker foreground. I also did a full-scale painting based on these sketches in the studio to show you my process of transferring these little sketches into a larger format painting. If you are interested to paint along the real-time one and a half hour demonstration is available on my Patreon. The link will be in the description below. After finishing the larger format, I decided to do one more experiment with values. Here it is. I did a lighter cathedral roof and darker walls, but kept the light on the ground and now I'm thinking of reproducing it in a full sheet painting. I'll post it on my Facebook. If you want to follow, please find me there. The link will be also in the description below. Also, I'd love to know which one is your favorite so far. Please let me know in the comments below. This is all for now. Hope it was informative. Hope you enjoyed it. Until my next video. Bye.